Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about the anatomy of the external auditory canal. We will be looking at the structure, innervation and all the possible questions that can be asked from this topic. So let's get started. So the external auditory canal or EAC for short is also called the external auditory meatus. The length of the EAC is about 24 mm and this is divided into two parts. The lateral 8 mm is the cartilaginous part and the medial 16 mm is the bony part. So to summarize, we can say that the lateral one third is the cartilaginous part and the medial two third is the bony part. Next, the tympanic membrane is at an angle of 55 degrees with the floor of the EAC. And due to this, the floor of the EAC is a bit longer when compared to the roof of the EAC. Now this angle of 55 degrees is there only in adults because at birth, it is almost horizontal. Now what is the shape of the EAC? So the EAC is S shaped. So whenever you want to perform a physical examination on a person and you want to look at the tympanic membrane or the middle ear through the tympanic membrane or even the EAC, you will have to pull the pinna in a specific way in order to straighten the EAC. And these ways differ in adults and in children because the shape of the EAC is different in both of them. So in adults, we will pull the pinna backwards, upwards and outwards and in children, we will pull it backwards and downwards. Now let's talk specifically about the cartilaginous part of the EAC. So as we saw earlier, it is a lateral one third of the EAC. Now this part contains the sweat, ceruminous and sebaceous glands along with hair. These are not present in the bony part. So this is an important point that the bony part does not contain these. Now some important points about the ceruminous glands and the wax. So the ceruminous glands are modified sweat glands. This is another MCQ that what type of glands are ceruminous glands. So these are modified sweat glands. Then ceruminous glands secrete cerumen which makes up the wax. So the wax is a mixture of all of these secretions along with dead cells and hair and it is not just made up of cerumen. Next the wax has a pH of 4 which is acidic and this acidic nature of the wax provides protection to the EAC. So the EAC because of this acidic wax is protected from the bacteria and other infections. Now from the exam perspective, there are two very important things that you should know about. The first one are the fissures of Santorini and the second one are the foramen of Hushke. So what exactly are these and what is the clinical significance? Let's see. So first, let us look at their exact locations. So in the cartilaginous part of the EAC, here we will find the fissures of Santorini. And in the bony part of the EAC, here you will find the foramen of Hushke. Now why exactly are we talking about these? Why are they important? Now before that, we should know that the parotid gland is located very near to this area. So both of these, the fissures of Santorini and foramen of Hushke, serve as a communication between the EAC and the parotid gland. And through these communications, the infection can go from the EAC to the parotid gland or from the parotid gland to the EAC. So that's exactly why it is very important to know about these. Next, we have to talk about the innervation of the EAC. But before jumping straight into it, it will help us a lot if we know the innervation of the pinna first. Because both of these innervations are kind of related. So let's see that first. So here on the left side, I have the front of the pinna and on the right side, I have the back of the pinna. So the medial most part of the anterior pinna is supplied by the auricular temporal nerve, which is a branch of the V3. Then the tip of the back side of the pinna is supplied by the lesser occipital nerve. Next, the concha, which is a central depression, both the front and the back side are supplied by the 7th and 10th cranial nerve. And last, which should be the easiest to remember, is that the greatest portion of the auricle is supplied by the greater auricular nerve. Now that we know about the innervation of the pinna, let's see the innervation of the EAC. So the anterior and superior surface of the EAC are supplied by the auricular temporal nerve. And comparing it with the picture on the left, you can appreciate that the innervation is kind of an extension from the pinna into the EAC. Similarly, the posterior and inferior surface of the EAC is supplied by the nerve of Arnold, which is a branch of the 10th cranial nerve. So this can also be seen as kind of an extension from the concha into the EAC. Now we have almost completed our topic. There's this one important point that I would like you to know, which is that stimulation of the Arnold's nerve leads to cuff reflex. 
So you should remember this because in the MCQ they can frame a question in which they can say that stimulation of which of the following nerves in the EAC leads to cuff reflex and now you know the answer it is the Arnold's nerve. So that's it for this video. Please visit my Instagram. I upload high yield MCQs there every day and if you have any doubts you can message me on Instagram anytime. Thank you.